Let's see how we can use composition to write better code in Golang. So composition is just what it sounds like. It's taking the bits and pieces of the code you want to use and composing it into one larger object, giving this new object the functionality of all the pieces you put together. So let's take a look at how to do this. We got a simple user struct here. Remember structs share some commonality with classes. I .e. here this struct has the properties user ID, a session token for authentication, and an array of features the user has access to. Similar to classes, we'll add some methods to this struct. Now this is all well and good, but we can organize this code a bit better. We can notice that we got a bunch of methods related to payment, some related to authentication, and a has feature method which checks if the user has access to a particular feature. Here's where we can use some composition. We'll start by creating an auth struct. This will now handle the session token. And we'll assign the two methods related to auth to the struct type. Similarly, we'll break out the payment methods to a new payment struct. Now we can use composition to add auth and payment functionality to the user type. Now note nothing has really changed here. We can still call these methods the same way we would previously, except now our code is a bit easier to read. I.e. we can see very clearly the functionality our object has. But there are more benefits to composition than just organizing your code. Suppose I need to create different user types, say paid and trial users, each having slightly different functionality and restrictions. So let's create a paid user struct and a trial user struct. Both of these are gonna be composed of the user type but we run into a problem. It doesn't make much sense for the trial user to have functionality related to payment, but with composition, we can move the auth and payment functionality to where we need it, i.e. the paid user is gonna have authentication and payment functionality, while the trial user just has authentication. Now the user struct only handles feature checking. Similarly, suppose we have a guest user type, which is for users who aren't logged in, but can still use some of the functionality of our platform. Here, this user doesn't have any authentication or payment functionality. With composition, what we've done is picked and choose what specific functionality each object should have, mixing and matching as we need. So how would we use this in practice? Well, here's what this might look like with some actual code. In the has feature method, since we're checking for both user login and account payment here, we'll set this method to be part of the paid account type and create methods for the trial and guest users separately. For example, the guest user has no auth or payment checks and gets the generic set of features available for our guest users from the database, rather than retrieving the features by user ID like we do in our other user methods. So now how do we actually use these user types in our code? Well, this is where interfaces come in. We'll create a features interface which just requires a has feature function like this. Here we got an example of how we use this in our code. So an interface limits the functionality we require, i.e. this user variable can be set to anything which has a has feature method, which for us all of our user types do. So depending on what our user type string is, we instantiate the proper object and call the has feature method. So composition lets us design our code base to be a set of building blocks, combining pieces of code together to form the objects we need with exactly the functionality that we need. So in particular, this is how you can use composition in Golang. Thanks for watching.